All right, good morning. Um, so we're gonna talk about stormwater emergency preparedness. So um, facts, hurricane facts, powerful tropical storm. A tropical storm is considered a hurricane when it reaches or exceeds four miles per hour. Hurricanes are also known as cyclones or typhoons, depending on the region they are. Hurricanes form over warm ocean waters near the equator. They need warm water to develop and use as fuel. They rapidly lose strength when they make land on the inland. And as we know, they produce violent winds, heavy rain, tornadoes, storm surges, and flooding. Storm surge and flooding are the main cause of fatalities, and coastal regions where we live are areas with the greatest risk of hurricanes. So when hurricane season starts, it's uh, June 1st, and always, as I tell everybody, it's the start of the season, and it runs through November 30th. Activity usually from late August through September, and if you can see that graph in the left corner, you can kind of see as the season, as we warm over those summer months, you can see that peak season where we have the most activity is September 10th. And then um, that graph kind of declines after that. On average, we have 10.1 named, named storms that occur each year and about 5.9 on average actually hurricanes. We have 2.5 major hurricanes, category three or greater. Um, they can bring winds, heavy downpours, power outages and flooding concerns. So how to prepare community-wide. This is something that we talk to a lot of uh, homeowners associations, property managers, you know, develop a plan of action. So um, for the community and share with homeowners. Uh, we always recommend that a residential or community development have a stormwater maintenance contract. There's pond maintenance companies out there who provide that routine and preventive maintenance throughout the year to make sure that that stormwater facility is working as designed. So monitor your pond function, understand how your system works. So there's different types of stormwater facilities. There's wet ponds, dry ponds, and infiltration facilities. There's even underground systems. All of the plans for your community or development are, are available. We have them here at the Conservation District. So if you don't understand what type of stormwater facility that you have, please reach out to us and we can provide technical assistance. For the different ponds, they provide storage volume for the rain event. So if you have a wet pond where you see water, um, everything above that is the storage for a storm event. So for that two, 10 and 100 year storm event, that's the area, that's the storage volume that we need. And then over uh, hours it has stopped, that water should go down in a reasonable amount of time. So when you're looking at your stormwater facility, be aware of how it's supposed to function locate the outfall structure. So most stormwater facilities should have some type of structure that's regulating, controlling the water elevation and understand where it discharges, meaning if it's going to a ditch, um, some type of waterway, take a look at that as well, because that can also impact how that stormwater facility is functioning. Um, and as always, you know, if you're unclear on how your pond is supposed to work, please contact the conservation district for assistance. So again, how to prepare community-wide. So watch your stormwater system before and after storm events to make sure it functions as designed. So when we just, when we have these one, two inch rain events, you know, really watch how the water's coming into the pond and how it's leaving the pond. So if you see that picture in um, the upper left corner, there's a concrete structure and you can see a small hole on that, on that concrete structure and that is basically what we call the low flow orifice, and that's regulating the water elevation in the, in the stormwater facility. So when the rainwater comes in, the surface water comes into the pond, the water will rise, and then it will discharge through those openings on the outlet structure and draw back down, and you're then able to regain that storage volume. So those are things that you want to be mindful of. If the pond is not regaining its storage volume, meaning it's not drawing down, then you, know, you need to investigate as to why. If there's a maintenance issue, a blockage, we have some communities that live in very active construction communities and sometimes just building debris can blow into the pond or trash. And even a trash bag can block those orifices and restrict drainage. Um, one thing we like to tell communities too in preparation for a big storm, um, remember to turn those pond fill wells off. So some people in their developments have wells to maintain a permanent pool elevation. And so 
we need all the storage that we can for a tropical storm or hurricane. So we ask that those wells be turned off so that we can use all available storage. In general, stormwater ponds should draw back down to their design permanent pool several hours after a storm event. So depending on how your stormwater facility is designed, sometimes it may be a couple hours and sometimes it may be a couple of days. And it really depends on the size storm event that we have. So if we get that 100 year storm, which is 9.2 uh, inches of rain in 24 hours, it's probably gonna take up to three days for that pond to draw back down to its design permanent pool. And sometimes, sometimes it'll happen much sooner. If it does not regain the storage volume, Again, look at that outlet structure to see if there's an obstruction, you know, trash, woody debris. And then also look at the outlet discharge location. Sometimes we have ditches that blow over in a ditch and then that whole root system can block drainage. Or maybe somebody, a homeowner has does not, done something. They've thrown something in the ditch that is restricting drainage. So there can be multiple reasons, but really be mindful of how the system works. And again, depending on the storm event, it may take hours to days for that pond to draw back down. So how to prepare individually. So do your part um, to keep debris out of the conveyance system, stormwater ponds and outlet channels. So again, remember not to put any kind of clippings, you know, Christmas trees, anything like that in the outfall ditch. Um, just remember to, um, to do your part and be mindful to pick trash up. And again, secure any items in your yard. You know, we're gonna have winds, a tropical storm or hurricane. Secure all of those items on your property so that they don't blow into the stormwater facility. Report clogged ditches and culverts to your HOA or a property management company so that they can be addressed prior to the storm event. Again, secure outdoor items and clear blockages if accessible and be mindful of how your stormwater pond works. Watch your pond before and after storm events to make sure it functions as designed. And again, if there are concerns and the water is not draining, you know, please reach out for assistance. So the 100 year design storm in Sussex County is 9.2 inches in 24 hours. So just re recently uh, around July 10th, we had a storm event um, that occurred and we had about 7.5 inches in about half that time frame. So that event actually exceeded the 100 year design storm. So that was probably about a 200 year storm event that occurred and we did have some flooding in places um, throughout the county. So when we have an event like that, we anticipate that the ponds are gonna be full. And in some cases, those ponds are gonna come out of bank depending on the size storm event. So the stormwater facilities are sized to convey and sometimes in some cases manage if it's a project under the current stormwater regulations, they will be managing that 100 year storm event. But if that event exceeds the 100 year storm, the pond will come out of bank and flood the roadside swales. And in some cases, as in this picture, the roadway during those events until the water is able to recede in several hours or days. So again, this is a picture just showing when we have an event that exceeds that 100 year design storm, um, ponds will come out of bank and we will need all the storage capacity throughout the community. So meaning those roadside swales will be full. And in some cases there will be water over the road for a temporary period of time until that water is able to go down. So again, this is a picture from Hurricane Sandy. So um, you can see that all of those roadside swales in the community are full and, and the system is functioning, you know, as intended. So structures are protected, meaning the houses are up high, but all low areas will flood. So that will include the roads, the stormwater pond, everything that's below those house structures will flood before your home. So here is a picture of kind of the peak activity of that Hurricane Sandy. And you can see everything was inundated during that time. And this, this storm event uh, was pretty much close to our 100 year design storm or slightly exceeded that storm event. So again, these are pictures that were taken um, this July when we had that storm event uh, that was about 7.5 inches in roughly 10 hours. Um, and you can see that uh, ponds came out of bank. There just wasn't enough time for that water to, to drain out um, and it backed it backflowed onto roadways and out of catch basins for a period of time, but it did go down several hours after the event. So 100 year storm events or greater, ponds are at capacity. And if it exceeds the 100 year design storm, we are exceeding the capacity of those stormwater facilities. 
So again, these are just a couple pictures of uh, from the July storm event. So that did exceed the 100 year design storm. And you can see the ponds are full, they are at capacity and, and getting pretty close to structures at this point. So um, this is just a general overview of what your community can do to prepare for uh, a storm as we are in hurricane season up until November 30th. So bottom line, please be safe. Um, this presentation is just a general overview. Do not attempt to perform any inspection or maintenance during a storm event. So bottom line, just be safe. And this is just to guide you in preparing um, for this hurricane season. Thank you. Jess, we have one question here about um, an HOA in Kent County is going to assume responsibility for their detention ponds, the wet and dry, um, in the next year or so. And is it typical to have a county come in and review those um, facilities prior to the turnover to ensure everything is working correctly and as planned? Yeah. Yes, they should reach out to the Kent Conservation District and uh, request an inspection where they meet with them and walk through the community um, and just educate them on how the pond's supposed to work. And then they can also verify with um, the Kent Conservation District that the as have been approved and that everything is in compliance. 